uh, thank you for giving me an opportunity. I'm Poonam Kaur, and uh, this is a question for all of you and asking just as a citizen. For a democracy to survive and thrive, we certainly need a strong opposition. But as we see in many states that they're enjoying the monopoly. And in this position, how do we really, really say that the center is unfair or the state is unfair? Nobody is really looking at democracy on the whole. Secondly, so this question was especially for you. Um, Bhugna, sir, for you. Um, we have uh, heard a lot of arguments about the center being unfair to South, and there have been arguments where, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, difference the way they behave. And having the strength that you have, would you, looking at the situation in Andhra Pradesh, not really ask for a special category status? Are we losing it out because of our political selfishness? Uh, Kate here, sir, first I would like to thank you because uh, on the 75 years of independence, when I went to Pochumpali and I tweeted, you've actually released the pension for the weavers, and I really want to thank you for that. And uh, I want to ask you, because you've been tweeting a lot about uh, taxes, is it not uh, true that state is also enjoying the taxes at the same time as the opportunity to abuse the center? Isn't it hypocrite? To you, sir, Dr. Tharoor. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, last, last one. Dr. Tharoor, would you take the opportunity for a South Jodo Yatra so that the democracy survives? Thank you. So the first uh, question being uh, uh, Dr. Isaac's uh, uh, question, the fiscal uh, uh, issues. In fact, uh, I uh, completely agree with the rest on this. The reason being 60% of the expenditure normally is borne by the states whereas 60% of the revenue goes to the center. So there's a whole lot of difference. And the responsibilities and the, the, the duties of the states are far more citizen-oriented than the union. Union has certain responsibilities in the form of defense, certain infra that is common to all the states and to the country, etc. But something that is closer to the citizen is primarily the state's responsibility. Therefore, we cannot have two sets of rules. One borrowing rules for the states and one borrowing rules for the center. Whatever is there has to be common. The same FRBM rules applicable to both. The same conditions applicable to both. Because ultimately, if uh, all the states contribute to a nation, all the citizens are Indians, then the debt of the country becomes the debt of the country, citizen. If the debt of a state is equally distributed to the citizens of the state, the debt of the country also becomes equally distributable to the citizens of the country. Therefore, here we have to be on common ground, them and us. And uh, coming to Poonam's uh, question about uh, special category, it is actually a very solemn assurance and promise given to the state of Andhra Pradesh during the reorganization of the state. During the reorganization of the state, it is like almost after a long time, you send your manager away without even telling them why you are sending him away. And while sending him away, you tell him that, okay boss, I'm going to give you an apartment and you don't give even that. This is what has happened. And at that point of time, the special category, whatever assurance was given, should have been implemented immediately. Normally what happens, Poonam, I don't know if you have traveled by train ever to Mumbai. You have? Okay then. In case you travel by train, if you are on time, you reach Bombay Central on time. By any chance, if you are delayed in Kalyan, you wait till afternoon. You can never get there. So this is the same case. You should have got it in 2014. The then government should have fought and got it. Now it is like continuously fighting. Thank you. South Jodo. South Jodo Yatra. Look, I'm a supporter of the Bharat Jodo Yatra. Well, I'll take uh, Mr. Isaac's question first, you know, the Fiscal Responsibility Budget Management, Budget Remanagement Act, that was enacted in 2003, has clearly, you know, you know outlasted its, uh, you know, intent is what I would like to believe. Because we're a growing economy, which is growing at 7, 8, 9 percent. And for a state like Telangana, which has grown at a CAGR of 15 percent over the last eight years, you know, you cannot look at debt as, as, as a burden. In fact, if you ask me, for a growing state, 
debt is a future investment if you're investing in capital expenditure. If you're investing in productive sector, if you're investing in a sector which is going to actually pay you back, then it's actually an investment, it's actually not a debt, first thing. The second thing is, in fact, Mr. Isaac would agree, when in 2003 the act was enacted by the UPA, it was envisioned that even the center would actually comply. But in the last 18 years, they've flouted it, they've amended it at least 18 times. Now, the, you can't have two set of rules you know, for both governments. The central government, you know, while it talks about uh, you know, debt, G G debt GDP, debt GSDP, they keep pointing to us that you know, you're, you're overshooting. They're at 60%, a state like Telangana is at 25%, but we still get told that you know, you're not behaving. And the last thing I'll tell you, to penalize us, to choke us, to strangulate us, and to tell us that, listen, you, you're not in compliance, you know, the SPVs that have been borrowing, the corporations that have been borrowing, to look at their debt burden and to actually put it on us, on the state, as uh, you know, covered under RFRBM, and to put it retrospectively is something that I will certainly challenge. I will definitely, uh, you know, work with Mr. Isaac. I would definitely go to the highest court in the country because it affects my state, it chokes my state, it chokes a growing state, and it's a travesty. So that's to Mr. Isaac's point. Now, Poonam, I thank you for supporting Handlooms. You said we are hypocritical. I don't think we are at all because, you know, we are a proud contributor to this nation. I'm proud that Telangana is a contributor. We are only 2.5% of India in terms of population, but we contribute to 5% of GDP. So, if there is a bridge in Gujarat, mein, Maharashtra, mein, Tamil Nadu, or somewhere else, I don't have any But I have to say this cultural, political hegemony that we are going to give and you are going to take it, I have to say that I have to say that because we are contributing, we are not going to be subservient or subordinate. So, that's why I don't say that. If you come to Telangana from Delhi, come and say thanks, come and eat here, eat Iranian tea, we are very good tea, so just you please behave and behave in a respectable fashion. You cannot come here, you cannot come here and behave in a respectable fashion. You cannot come here, you cannot come here and tell us and dictate terms to us and basically tell us that we are not performing when we actually have done rather well. We have the largest per capita income in the country. In, in, you know, we, in 2014, it was 124,000 rupees. Today, it's 278,000 rupees. Our GSDB has risen by 130%. We have outdone, outperformed the union government on all benchmarks. So we have a right to decide our own priorities. In fact, I heard uh, Tyaga said, uh, you know, speak in a TV where he has said, famously asked, in fact, he said, are you doing better than us that you actually dictate terms to us? So the point is, the point is, we are not being hypocritical. All we are saying is we are happy to contribute to the nation. We are more pat patriotic than you, but at the same time, do not, you know, kind of impose. Do not kind of, you know, try and come here and tell us what to do and what not to do. Let us decide our priorities. Let us chart our own course. That's all I'm saying. Can I just add one point? Do you think a fiscal council where fiscal rules are determined in collaboration with the center and state can help resolve this challenge? Maybe, but I just want to make a point here about this FRBM Act, right? So we have our own FRBM Act equivalents and we can amend them also. But the difference between us and the union government, once the union government amends its act, and it has done, as Katya said, 18 times and uh, violated, that's the end of the story. For us, after we amend our act, we'll get these letters. All of us have got one of these letters, then we get a second letter that says, you shall not borrow more than X rupees. You shall not borrow so much of it, uh, more than so much of it in the market, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So this hypocrisy of a double standard where you can do whatever you want, then you tell us that we can't do what the Constitution allows us to do, our Act allows us to do, you use this 293.3 backdoor clause and all that. So let me just put all of it together and say, we don't begrudge sending net donor money or, or being net not recipients. We don't have any lower concern for the average Indian citizen than anybody else. What we don't like, expanding on what Katya said, don't come and tell us as if you brought this money from your house and gave it to us. It's our money, you're giving it back to us. Some of it you're giving back to us, number one. Number two, either you perform better than us and then tell us how we should act, or you learn from us, or at least leave us alone to perform better than you rather than try to subvert our performance. Number three, if you want to take national policy and actually create things 
in areas where it's not your domain, right? Education was moved from the state list to the concurrent list. It did become a union list. Uh, agriculture is in the state list. Minor dams and ports are in the state list. Why are they legislating over there and how have they involved any of us in it? See, it's one thing if you call all of us collectively and you say this is not working well, let's do it better. We are likely to get some progress or at least we can agree to disagree and walk away. You enforce by diktat with no track record of performance and say, because I say so, you shall do so. This is, so our friction is not about being donors. Our friction is not about being less than caring citizens. Our friction is that we don't get treated as equal partners. That's what the Constitution says. It doesn't say there are two levels of government. It says there are two parallel, equal governments. And we get no acknowledgement for the good things we do. And in fact, we get told how to do it. Let me just take NEET as an example. What is our objection with NEET? Health is a subject where it's very hard to separate education from public health delivery because you can't teach medicine without a hospital. And the government of Tamil Nadu, I would say better than most states, at least in ratio of doctors to patients and other health measures, has done better than almost any state in India. We have an integrated policy that goes all the way from medical colleges to government hospitals to rural health centers to primary health centers where we incentivize doctors to go and work there so that they can get priority in education, etc. A test like NEET disrupts all of these designs. It's not just about the entrance, it's about the entire health delivery system. And then I ask the question, on what basis do you tell me that I should change my model when my model has produced far superior results than you and is 100% funded by my state budget? It's not your money. You haven't done better than us. Why should you tell us how we should run an admission test? We will give uh, priority to uh, the, you know, uh, SE and Dalits. We will give priority to rural students. We will give priority to state uh, schools. That is our health system. It has produced phenomenal results and brilliant doctors all over the world. On what basis do you believe you know better than us? Why should we listen? It's not even your money, it's our money. It's not even a central grant. It's the, it's the state of Tamil Nadu allocated 20,000 crores in the budget to run the health system. So this is the attitude that we don't like. Otherwise, we're willing to play with anybody on anything. We're willing to participate, to discuss, to come out with better outcomes, right? Is this big brother or big daddy or, you know, messiah complex that we have a problem with?